Hello, this is our marketing consultancy project. We're group 11 from session two. My name is Natalie Gaskins um, and we're going to jump into the presentation here. So we're going to start out by um, talking about the conceptual model development, then the methodology, managerial implications, limitations, and then future research. So the goal of this project is to increase market power for a retail chain in Singapore. And we aim to do that by understanding what contributes to consumer loyalty using a moderation model. I'm gonna pass it to my teammate for talking about the conceptual model development. All right, guys, my name is Dolan and I'm here to show you about the conceptual model development. development. Uh, so uh, first, I will show you the reason why we chose uh, the consumer loyalty as the V2C, which is the value to consumers. Um, when consu when you can see on this picture, when consumers have the loyalty to one tool, one store or one product, and what they will gain is first, better shopping experience, and second, the lower consumer switching cost and third, more opportunity to gain discount or voucher. And this is not only what consumers will get, also the retail stores would get would gain first a better word of mouth, and second, a stable consumer's flow, and third, a more convenient advertisement. After the process above the above, the satisfaction to the to the store would gradually uh, transform into loyalty to the store, uh, the consumer's loyalty to the store. Um, more customers would purchase the product in the stores and that they are, they are loyal to, and the store will gain more profits, which can be used to improve the consumer's shopping experiences and ultimately increase the shop, increase the customer loyalty. The process above can be seen, you can see in, the, in this picture, can be seen as a positive feedback, feedback circle. All of these uh, explain the consumer's loyalty can be identified as the indica indicator to judge the stores whether it's, whether it's good or not. Also, for the independent variables, just like what mentioned before, and for the first one, consumer, sat sat uh, customers satisfaction with the store, uh, the satisfaction can eventually transform into the loyalty to the store, which can lead to a positive correlation to the, uh, to the loyalty. And also, the familiarity with the store brands can also make cons consumers uh, be more aware of the stores with the brands they are familiar to. They would purchase more in they will purchase more products in these stores in the in the end. And of course, in the end, it will turn to the loyalty to the store. For the last one, customers' product involvement. Uh, the cost customers' product involvement means. Consume, customers can, edit, uh, can uh, identify that uh, which products are important to them and which, which product matters to them and what they really care about. The more product the, that which which is matters to the to the customers, uh, the more they will the, the more they will purchase in the stores which have this product and and of course they will be uh, more likely to be loyal to those stores. Uh, and for gender, uh, according to the article and the, to the fact, the, the gender does not really have a linear linear relationship uh, between gender and the and the customer loyalty. But there are some articles that points out that when 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 the people that the people's gender would impact the participation of the re retail stores, such as if if one uh, retail store have their apps. And, and and people can buy, buy uh, can buy products can, can purchase products on the on their apps, and they will all and for the men's they will highly they, they will focus on the highly whether they can have a highly efficient shopping experience, and where women will attach a greater value to the creation of a, of a warm and effective relationship with the retailer. So this so these are my part here, and we will show you about the methodology. Thank you. In terms of methodology, we're going to jump into our data and our participants, our sample. So in terms of data collection, we, con we um, conducted a survey and we had 291 participants 
um, from ages 18 to 81. The average age was about 42 years and with the standard deviation of 12 years, so quite a gap. Um, we had 58 males, 233 females, so the males really um, are the minority in the sample. Um, in terms of experience with STOR, we measured um, participants' experience, um, and it ranges from zero to 30 years. The average is about five and a half years with a standard deviation of 5.3 years. And we also measured ex their experience with retail industry. Um, that ranges from zero to 20 years, uh, has an average of three years and a standard deviation of 3.9 years. In terms of the variables that we would like to use for our model. In terms of psychometric variables, we have customer satisfaction with the store. The mean there is 6.32 or so, which means most participants are slightly satisfied um, with the store with a standard deviation of 1.09, so it varies a little bit. Um, customers' familiarity with the store brands um, with a mean of 5.8 or so, which means most are slightly familiar. The standard deviation is 1.23-ish. Um, and then the last psychometric variable is customers' product involvement um, with a mean of 5.4-ish, uh, um, which means most are neutrally involved with the products. Standard deviation is about 1.4. Um, for our factual variable, we're using gender, and again, we have 58 males and 233 females. My name is uh, Huang Chuang. I'm going to introduce uh, the lesson part, and uh, there are five steps to development good questions after defending the variables and the scales from academic results we should use. Uh, explanatory after analysis to examine the question and uh, excluding in a pre print question to test uh, whether the uh, choose variable and the scale are suitable for the model. If the fraction loading are lower than or around 0 0.5, which means the scale items is less relevant to the variable or can be used in multiply variables. In other words, when the factor loading is larger than 0 0.5, the scale items are related. Besides, the scale item doesn't cross loading or long in one factor. Therefore, all the scale items for each variable are good items. Uh, after excluding all the bad, uh, the bad items, the next part is to uh, examine the ability, ideally the Kroberch uh, alpha is uh, larger than 0 0.7. In our case, the question for the dependent variable and the three dependent variable. In our conceptual model have high internal Consistent signs, they are all higher than 0 0.7. There are also another parameter to examine the ability. It's a composing reability, they are high of composant reability, they are more internal consistence of the scaled items and the variable. As the table show on the bottom of the table, the compositive reliability is larger than 0 0.7. The results show that the three scale items is measuring the same, same 
horrible as uh, the same tie with uh, combustion alpha is uh, larger than 0 0.7. The two results of the parameter should the scale items are highly relative. After testing the reliability of the question, the final step is examining validity arrangement of various extract is to test the uniqueness of each variable. The idea AVE should be larger than 0 0.5. In this case, to calculate the AVE by using factor loading in the factor analysis or the variables AV results are larger than 0 0.5. My name is Wu Qi Rui, so I'm going to continue to introduce the valid uh, validity testing. So the next step is generating shared variance, which indicates the similarity within the uh, variables. Firstly, we need to compute correlation. To do so, we need to combine three questions to get variable. For example, to get the variable of customer satisfaction to the store, we can use SPSS to combine the three scale items together and divide it by three. <clears throat> so the correlation coefficient between each two variable in our conception model showed in the right table. To calculate the shared variance, we need uh, the square of the correlation coefficient. So the two tables above shows the result of shared variance regard to each variable. Now we have to compare the AVE and share uh, the share variance between each two variables together. So for the three tables showed below, the result show the th uh, three variables AVE, which ranged from 0.72 to 0.81, are much larger than the share variance, which ranged from 0.33 to 0.36. Therefore, the discriminant validity of the variables of uh, the customer satisfaction to the store and customer's familiarity with the store brands and also the last variable, customer's product involvement, are supported. The scale items of these three variables have validity respectively. After successfully testing the reliability and validity of the scale items and variables, the next step is testing the moderator model itself. There are two steps for model testing. First, we need to test the main effect only model without the moderator. To do so, we have to conduct a linear regression analysis to see whether the customer loyalty as the dependent variable will move together with the three independent variables. The regression coefficient as well as p-value shows the significance of the customer loyalty and also the three uh, variables. The result shows the model fits the data well since the p-value is smaller than 0 0.01 of the uh, f-test is statistically significant. At the same time, the SAT, BRFA and PINV variables are positively uh, and significantly related to customer loyalty since the p-value is less than 0 0.05. Then we move to test the full model with the moderator as well as the control variable. In our case, the moderator is gender. So the second step of moderator model testing is performing a hierarchical multiple regression analysis by using the mean center variables. Uh, using the interaction effects and mean center variable is to avoid multicollinearity. The result from SPSS shows that both model one, which without interaction effects, and model two, which with the interaction effects, both of them fit the data well because the p-value from both models are less than 0.01. So it's Natalie again. Um, to sum things up, we performed a hierarchical multiple regression. As you can see here, both models are represented. 
Um, in terms of model one, the main effects um, model, customers' product involvement is related positively to customers' loyalty because the p-value or significance is less than 0.05. Customers' familiarity with store brands is related positively to customer loyalty as the P value is less than 0.01, and the customer satisfaction with the store is also related positively to customer loyalty as the P value or significance is less than 0.01. In terms of the second model or the full model, product involvement with gender is not related to loyalty. Uh, customers' familiarity with store brands combined with gender is not uh, related to loyalty as well, uh, but customer satisfaction with the store combined with gender is positively related um, to loyalty since the p-value is less than 0.01, um, or sorry, negatively related to loyalty since the p-value is less than 0.01. The p-value is less than 0.01, even though the b-value decreased. However, the p-value is still larger than zero. Thus, satisfaction becomes weaker when the respondents are male, since the b-value changes from um, 0.817 to uh, 0.239. So in terms of a recap um, of our key insights from running the models, um, in terms of the baseline model, all psychometric variables are positively related to customer loyalty. Gender is not related to customer loyalty. Um, and then in terms of the full model, uh, customer satisfaction becomes weaker if the respondent is male, which is about 20% of the respondents. And um, gender does not impact customers' familiarity with store brands or their product involvement. And now we're going to hop to managerial implications. Hi, I'm Zimuran. So it's my honor to be here to talk about how managers should increase consumer loyalty from the pers perspective of followables. First of all, um, the results of our research show that increasing consumer satisfaction has a positive impact on building consumer loyalty. Managers can quantify consumer attitudes through behavior experiments. For example, establish an evaluation feedback system, collecting consumer shopping perceptions through random questionnaires, additional rating facilities, and extra. Managers should also identify feedback consumers, interview them regularly, and give them gifts or vouchers. While this not enable consumers to actively participate in the evaluation, but also enables managers to optimize product and services quality in a timely manner. Secondly, consumers are more likely to accept goods from familiar brands. To do so, managers need to enhance consumers' interaction with the brand by promoting the brand culture in order to increase consumer familiarity with the shop brand. In the online channel, Managers can enhance visual familiarity with the brand by posting memorable advertisements and um, celebrity endorsements. In addition, managers should pay more attention to increasing interaction with the consumers on social media and setting up offline salons regularly. So thirdly, managers can increase consumer loyalty by enhancing the product involvement in the process from design to the, to the final part. So recent research has shown that the effect of product involvement on shop loyalty is moderated by product quality. It is, um, also means that the consumers who are highly engaged with the product will seek out the quality of the product, which in turn will have an impact on consumer loyalty. While focusing on the quality of the product itself, consumers can be involved in the design of the product for example, collecting new products, slogans across the whole uh, channels. So finally, our research indicates that gender as an important moderator has a significant impact on the consumer loyalty. Managers should pay attention to the gender characteristics of their consumers. According to the recent consumer behavior research, due to the different drivers of emotional attachment, Male customers are more strongly, uh, strongly driven by the competitive 
advantages of the marketing plan. While female customers are attached to the novelty, it should be emphasized how the plan offers male customers the opportunity to join the dominant group. For example, the gold memberships. As for female customers, there needs to be a focus on the personalization, for example, setting up women's shopping festivals and lecture. In addition, Shiver's re uh, research suggested that attachments in their relationship may lead to a greater willingness to make sacrifices or investments for a romantic partner. So managers should adapt their product and marketing strategy in response to the sp specific times. For example, the limited packaging for Valentine's Day. And in conclusion, the differentiation to develop the correct strategy can have an undeniable positive impact on consumer loyalty. Hi, my name is Harshit Sharma, and I'll be talking about the limitations and the future scope of the model. First, the lack of attention to measurement error. This is because when independent and moderator variables are measured with error, the unstandardized coefficient estimates will be biased. Second, variable distributions are assumed to include in the full range of possible values. The data collected, which do not represent the full range of possible scores of the variables under consideration that might exist in the data. The researchers should attempt to capture the full range of scores of all variables involved in the analysis if that is not feasible. Third, unequal sample size across moderator based category. This is for situations where the moderators are categorical. Possible researchers should uh, strive to balance the sample size in each of the categories of the moderator variable and should try to collect similar propositions. Fourth, Insufficient statistical power. Many studies lacked sufficient power to de detect the moderating effects. As a result, many moderating effects can go undetected. Statistical power can be increased by using larger samples and conducting research in settings that control for extraneous variables. It is further recommended that power should be used to compute and report in the future studies to dispel the notion that the study is underpowered. Fifth, artificial dichotomization of continuous moderators. This problem is raised because of the artificial dichotomization of a continuous moderator uh, variable in the analysis, which is commonly done through IBM SPSS. This is because the interaction after generation in IBM SPSS is relatively tedious. They argue uh, such an issue will uh, lead to the loss of information. It not only undermines the interpretation of the moderator, but also reduces the variance of the moderator variable. Sixth, presumed effect of correlation uh, product term and its components. This signifies the correlation between the variables used in the model. Many researchers administer a procedure called mean centering to try to uh, reduce this effect. Also the fact that the results regarding interaction effect uh, would uh, likely remain unchanged regardless of the predictors being centered or not. Last limitation is interpreting uh, first order effects based on models excluding product terms. This means that the interpretation of the lower order uh, without including the interaction effects. This is not recommended because an interaction exists. Uh, when an interaction exists, the predictor involved uh, in the interaction uh, does not have a single unique effect. Instead, it has a range of effects that vary according to the level of moderating variables and are referred to as simple slopes. So the future scope of these model could be, uh, could have multiple uh, applications such as uh, influencer or social media marketing for which attributes such as uh, brand equity, brand loyalty and brand recall, uh, recall value could be used to find the effect on such marketing campaigns. Next, uh, e-commerce could be benefited by such model to optimize online customer experience for other emerging uh, categories in the e-commerce market. Last, uh, the moderation model can be used for international marketing 
to focus on uh, important factors such as political risk and cultural uh, risk before entering those uh, markets. So that's our final presentation and thank you for your time.